So I'm looking at the, the Reddit post that you uh, that you made. Uh, Danny's Lotto is open for business. Mm -hmm. Can you, can you walk walk me through what uh, what you did here? Uh, I made a Reddit post. <laughs> excellent, excellent. That's a great first start. That's it, that, that's great. how every that's how everything starts, right? Start with Reddit. Yeah, um, it's I'm I made this because uh, I went to the Ethereum meetup mm -hmm. uh, and Vitalik was. He went off on a tangent about how how easy it is to make basically illegal gambling sites in Ethereum. <laughs> he does seem to bring that up a lot. I'm not sure what he's doing <laughs> in his in his spare time. <laughs> yeah. It's 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 not going. I hope that's not the talk that he's going to give to government officials. By the way, you can implement black markets and gambling sites. This is great. Excellent, for... <laughs> excellent for tax purposes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so, I mean, yeah. I mean, uh, the government-sponsored lotteries is a is a popular income source for uh, uh, for all kinds of countries. So who knows? I suppose, yeah, a, a government could probably implement this. And so, yeah, that's that was basically the idea. And at this point, I'm just writing contracts to experiment with what's possible. Yeah. So this was something that I decided that I'd do quickly which turned out not to be quickly uh, but yeah. i guess you learned a lot yeah i did so actually so i have i have lf0 running here in uh, uh let me tap over to that so i have the, the lf0 client and i already went to your uh lottery well landing page i guess or the lotting app uh-huh hot yeah. russian grills want to date you i really love that touch <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I have a bit of a weird sense of humor. I wanted to wanted to fit all the scammy looking things into one application. Yeah, 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 yeah. At least make it seem legit. <laughs> yeah, legit, right? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, this is the first time that I've actually worked with the JavaScript bindings because they're a rather new feature that uh, Gavin just like a few days ago implemented. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, this was something that I was excited about because with my tic-tac-toe game, uh, basically you had to type in numbers into the data section and then look through the contract data and read out what okay, your game okay. state was. Well, may may yeah. well maybe that makes uh, chess players uh, 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 warm and fuzzy, but uh, tic -tac <laughs> the average tic-tac-toe player probably not so much. No, yeah, I think so that I think this is a great demonstration of what is possible with this, uh, with this uh, JavaScript uh, UI interface thing. Uh, mm -hmm. And and I also prefer something else than to see uh, Gavin's uh, picture here on the. Oh yes, always <laughs> staring at you. <laughs> yes, it's like I'm seeing you. <laughs> uh, so yeah. I'm connecting actually at the at the network. Uh, I'm I'm, I'm look, running the latest build of the develop branch. So I guess okay. that is the the PUC five pre build something like that. Yeah. Um, I, I, I just submitted, a, actually I just bought a ticket a couple minutes ago, so I'm not sure if that influenced the state somehow, but maybe you can just walk me to the to the buttons and how it actually how it actually works and also what's interesting, what happens under the under the hood, so to, so okay, to say. Okay, well, the first button that you see there is the what's the jackpot okay. button. And if you Ooh. click that, yeah, uh, it what it does is it just looks through the contract data and it knows where the jackpot number is located and it just reads it out and displays it for you. Okay, so there is, uh, hang on, so can I find, I see probably the contracts. Oh yeah, there's Danny's Lottery. Yeah. And then it's there is, if the I scroll top. up, there is some storage. Yeah, if you actually scroll down just hey, a little bit. Hang on, let, me, let me expand this thing yeah. a little bit so I can actually keep looking at it. Yeah, you see, so OX. this is Danny's lo okay. So this is the main lottery, and and I guess you have this lottery contract ID uh, hard coded in the in the application. Um, uh, I mean, yeah, the 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 interfaces I have to hard code it. I'm working on a on a system where that will no longer be needed, but yeah. for the time being, okay, it just you just insert the contract number in, and it will point to it. Sure. So if you look at OX six. Oh, it's six. Okay. Six. Yep. That's actually oh. the jackpot yeah. value. Uh, sorry. Ah, okay. Oh. It's it's in hexadecimal like, notation. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not exactly easy to read. No. But 
Yeah, there's several other values in there that store things like where the tickets are being pointed at okay. for the time being. Yeah, and, and, and these are the tickets, I guess. Yes, those are the tickets. So, oh, yeah. Eight. Actually, no, those aren't the tickets. Those are who's won what. So that's that's like account holdings right there. Interesting. Yeah. So it looks like I have won five ether, and whoever owns OX a seven. Oh, that's that's me. That's my oh, that's my okay. address, as you can as you can see. Yeah. Looks like you've won five ether too. Ooh, cool. So yeah, if we go back to the uh, interface. Okay. Let uh, me. I cannot dock this. I think. Oh. Um, we'll just keep this aside. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so um, click find my tickets. All right, it says you have no tickets. That's probably because a round has ended. So the way that it works is that you buy tickets and then they'll like expire by the time the next round comes mm -hmm. up. And the round is only 10, 10 blocks in length. Yep. So it happens rather quickly. And, and that's configurable as well, right? That is, I guess, this oh, yes. OX5 value. Uh, so. OXA yep. is hexadecimal for for ten. Yep. 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 Actually, I, I, I like having the feature that I just in the initialization section, which I guess we'll get to when we look at the code. I just always put in like configurable values in the first like six or however many slots are needed. No, just that's, that's yeah, that's a great. It's also great for for debugging and introspection, and it and it. Uh, I guess it also allow you would allow you to make some kind of admin interface where you can change the properties of a contract without having to to update the contract itself. Well, in the future, you still you'd need to write in admin functions, but yes, that, that sure is in, in theory, yeah. yeah. So uh, if you type in a number, it has to be between one and uh, zero and one hundred. Okay. So I think technically zero doesn't work due to a weird bug. Mm, okay. Well, let's <laughs> pick forty-two here. Yeah, and then you click buy. Okay. So now I bought a ticket. And you should see that, yeah. So I see, a, I see a pending transaction to Denny's Lottery. Yeah. Yes. So that button actually makes a call to, like it makes a transaction from your account to the contract without you having to type in all the data yourself. Okay, sure. So that's one of the nice little like packaging things in. And it is 2000 Finney. It was 2000 Finney, so that's two Ether. Yeah. Yep. And it just and got you, mined. Yep. And if you click find my tickets again, it should show up. Unless... Mm, oh, right. That's Until we get the alarm feature, you actually have to buy two tickets the first time. Like, if, if nobody for a while, then the round will have already ended by the time you buy your ticket. So for the, the first time I bought it, I, it was for the previous round something? Yeah. Uh, okay. Basically. So basically the first time I should just buy an empty ticket or, or just discard it and then, okay, I'll just buy a new ticket. Well, actually you do, if you win, like you still can win on that ticket. Hmm. It's just that you don't get to see it at all. It's not that interesting. Okay. Because like as soon, the way that works is that as soon as it receives a transaction, it will check whether or not it's time to run, yeah. uh, like draw. Yeah, I see. But if it's been more than 10 blocks, they'll do that immediately. So now you should be able to see find my tickets, even if it's, it's it still, hasn't mined it, it. It's still pending. Uh, yeah, even though? Yeah. Oh, well, now you definitely can see it because okay. it is mine. Okay. There you go. 25. Yeah. So yeah. Just, uh, that was just my tickets. And probably also yeah. the jackpot went up. Yeah, oh, yeah. Be, it went a bit four because I bought two tickets. Okay. Yep. Yep. So yeah, that's that's the basic features, I guess. And then and once I win, uh, it is. Uh, oh, it go, it go, we go back to the contract. Um, to the contract state. Mm -hmm. Let me see where is the contract section. You can check your winning, winnings by hitting the, the check button, which basically just goes in and finds um, any addresses that you own and how much money they have. So if I won something, it would be added to my pending balance, basically, until I claim it. Yes. So if I click on check, it shows yeah. me that I still have five Ether. Yeah. 
and then you can hit claim and it will send the money to you. So last time I tried it actually crashed LS0, so I'm a bit scared to, to do that. But oh, so we did can, it? We can try. When did you do that? Uh, yesterday. But it says, are you sure? Your money is safe with me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Danny, I'm, I'm sure. <laughs> oh, boom. Ah, oh, damn it. So um, there, there was an issue. I'm guessing I haven't fixed it on the... Uh, I haven't pushed the edit to the... Oh, here we have uh, Gavin's... Uh... <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm guessing I haven't yet uh, pushed the the edits to the, the repository. So, unfortunately, it's what's happening is it's trying to send a... Uh... Let me reconnect to the network. Ah. It's trying to send... Um, a transaction to itself, I think. Okay. But I fixed that error, and at least on my machine, it no longer crashes. But I guess I forgot to the, to push it, or maybe I pushed it to the wrong repository. I yeah. I mean, on the other hand, if you can make uh, LF zero crash, there's probably also something wrong with the with the client. I mean, uh, even. True. You shouldn't be able to do that, I guess. But uh, this is still pretty. Uh, yeah. The early the. Days. The the JavaScript uh, bindings are like super buggy. Yeah. <laughs> there's there's certain ones that I just don't use. Actually, there was another issue that so I have two for some reason I have two accounts in my wallet. Yep. But I one has a lot of ether in it and the other one not, mm -hmm. and I need to make sure that the active one that I want to use is the topmost because then it is the the one that will be used as my default address for my wallet. So if I okay. if I we reorder if I use the the four four F one and I do find my tickets, then I don't see any tickets. So that way you can I guess you can have multiple entries to the. Um, okay, so you are definitely, you're definitely using an older version. And if I was on the Linux side of my computer, then I would go and push the the edits. But I've I've fixed that too, so that now it will search through all your addresses and then sum up your, sum up your balances and your tickets okay well we uh, um, we'll, we'll try later if that uh, i guess it uh, things it's will keep, keep updating it's a anyway. minor I'll thing. just just for now just my money will remain safe with you <laughs> just, just just spend that's, it all at once real, that's the real scam <laughs> I, 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 so you can't get your money out um okay so let's let's take a look at the uh, at, uh, at the source code sure um so you link to uh your your repository in, mm -hmm. in github yeah, I like to uh, make it available to anybody. Just in yeah, case. I mean, for sake of transparency. I mean, while while scamming, you might as well do it uh, in a transparent <laughs> way. <laughs> yeah, well, mostly I just do it because I'm doing this for fun, and hopefully somebody else. I it seems like I'm the only one who's like really writing serious LLL contracts. I I I think so, or at least one of the one of the few ones. So that's uh, it's yeah. a good it's so a good it's starting point and a, and a nice example, especially how to how these bindings work and how to integrate it in. Uh, and, I, and I do like to see some of the 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 coding best practices, like uh, having this this configuration block up, up front or on, on the top. I mm. think these are in important things that other people might also be uh, interesting to you to use. And I remember from reading uh, on the forums a while ago, like how how are we going to do randomization? How can you do that in a, in a secure way? So I think you also solve that. So at least there are a couple interesting takeaways. Yeah, there's randomization is actually a very interesting problem from many points of view. Shall we first look at the the HTML or at the at the, the LL code? Uh, I guess the let's look at the the lottery dot list. Okay. So yeah. Of course, the the first section is the initialization. Let, let me is... let me make it a bit bigger, ah, right? There we go. There we, that's better. So oh, the the first section, <laughs> the the first section is the the initialization, and the first thing that I always do with any of my contracts is set an admin, just so that I can kill the contracts because I really hate yep. contract spam. Yeah. Those orphan contracts that nobody can delete but yeah. always show up in the box. So, so this first first block only gets executed once. Yeah, uh, and it then gets, it gets executed on 
when you create the contract and then it gets thrown away. Okay, yeah, that's useful because we used to have this discussion like how how do you claim, or I mean, how do you link it uh, with, with yourself? So you have to hard code address, but this way, yeah, you can have the, the, the caller in there and, and uh, without modifying the, the contract code if somebody else were to, to submit it. Yeah. yeah. And then, um, so yeah, I, I tend to put some important values in the first section, either ones that are just like global variables in essence mm -hmm. or um, anything that is configurable. I stick in the first section and yeah. just define it all at once. Yeah. It also acts sort of like, um, like well, I, I comment pretty much every line because it's so unreadable. I guess you, you have to at this point with uh, the LL style language. Yeah. Yeah. So the uh, it, at uh, OX1, I, I basically store a pointer to the address where the lotto tickets are. Okay. And then that will increment as people buy tickets. And then when the round happens, it, get re it gets reset back to OX8. Ah, uh, okay. So it's, it's like a stack that's just, uh, I see. Yeah. It just stores it and then flushes it out. Um, OX2, the lotto difficulty, this is um, this is a configurable number that basically chooses how how many numbers you can have, you can pick. So mm -hmm. I have it set at 100, so you can pick a number between 0 and 99. Yeah. Uh, I did that because if it, the lottery was too hard, I figured nobody would play it. Sure. Um, start of round, so it initializes... Um, it keeps track of when the round started. Number uh, pulls out the block number that the that's current. Okay, so so let, let, let me see. So that is that would be block oh six thousand four hundred thirty nine, for example. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So OX three will store when the latest round started, and then when a round hap like when a draw happens, it'll reset that value. Yeah. Um, OX four. Uh, how much ether per draw to pocket? Uh, yeah, so this is how much I steal, basically. It's a fee. Uh, Let's call it that way. Currently, I just have it feed back into the jackpot so that the jackpot doesn't start at zero. Mm -hmm. So it seemed like somebody actually won the jackpot. I, I think so. I, I remember it being at 260 something yesterday. Yeah. And then it, it, oh. went, it went down. So. I think somebody won the jackpot and then they withdraw drew their holdings. So somebody the interface works for. I think it is it must be Gavin. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, somebody was lucky. I want to know how they like if they actually won or if they they scammed it because there are ways to scam this and I'll talk about that when we get down a little bit lower. Okay, so if you if you won the the jackpot recently and you're listening to this uh please please report yourself to the to the relevant authorities. <laughs> Uh, OX5 just is another configurable value, how long a round is. Yeah. So it says 10, so every 10 blocks it will happen. Yeah. Um, I chose 10 because people get bored if they're waiting too long. <laughs> sure, yeah. Like, this is just for fun, so... So in, 10, in 10 minutes, uh, it should be 10 minutes, but I guess it's going a bit faster than once a minute at this, uh, at this yeah. point. Yeah. So... It's sort of like eight-ish, I guess. Yeah. Um, and then OX6, which I set to zero, but that's completely unnecessary. Mm. But uh, basically, that is where the jackpot is located. So it starts out at zero. Uh, you can't, like, if you allocate, when you run this the first time, you'll probably want to allocate like a little bit of buffer funds just to make sure that statistical anomalies doesn't kill it. Yeah. And then... Uh, where, you, you, where, where, does, where does it locate? You mean just the amount uh, of the jackpot? Yeah. Okay, I, I see. So if you actually look at the, the current contract, so it is 65.80. And if we look at the contract itself, I always get confused with the test. Yeah. One. So here it shows... Okay, yeah. so that <laughs> is the current uh, jackpot. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, I guess it would be helpful to have a hexadecimal editor, calculator, editor. I'm not sure if my scientific conversion oh. <laughs> programmer. 
Oh yeah, that's handy. I always go online. I just don't think it works though. <laughs> no, I cannot seem to paste. You could type it in, I guess. Three nine one two eight eight F six zero six. Is it not the editing show? Oh, I don't think you can actually copy out of these fields, which is something Oh, that is the problem. That is the problem. Yeah. I see. I see. Because Oh, it was I've still copying the the five dot uh, yeah. something. Okay. Well, forget about that. All right. Um yeah, okay. So that is the current uh, value of the of the jackpot. Yeah. And then uh the last two lines in the initialization is one of the more neat features that have been recently implemented that Name registration is now incorporated into Alith, Alith Zero. Mm -hmm. So here I'm giving the contract automatically a name of Denny's Lotto. So it registers with the name registry, and uh, I it basically claims the name, so it's easy to find the contract. Yeah, yeah, and and also the first you see that the transactions are actually going to mm -hmm. to 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 you, where you actually see what's happening when you're making a transaction. Yeah, it's yeah. I I love that feature. Uh I was I've recently updated to a new version of the the develop branch and uh the name registry hadn't been implemented yet and I was so sad. Yeah. So it is two hundred twenty ether at the moment. But the jackpot is sixty five point eighty. Mm hmm And the current balance for these two accounts are I think they're five both. So yeah. Oh, that's probably the extra, the spare, the spare change that you yeah, sent to I, it. I, I see. Mm -hmm. I sent in quite a bit of buffer just to make sure that, because there's two ways to win, right? Yeah. You gotta gotta hook them with something. So you can either yeah. win the jackpot, yeah. or you can get the ones digit of yeah. the the draw. Yeah. And if you get the ones digit, that gets you uh, five ether. Oh, actually, so this is interesting. So here we see that I, so this is my address, the 8A7 yep. one, and I bought ticket uh, hexadecimal 19, which is 25, I guess. Yep, yep, I that's see. your ticket there. Yeah. Yep. And then the other two addresses are basically just um, balances for different um, different users. Sure, sure. Okay. All right, so that's the initialization. Now we go to the main block, and it's always a challenge to make it fit, at least yeah. in your memory, or in your in your head. Well, you can make the font smaller, then it fits. <laughs> no, let's not not start there. <laughs> yeah. So. so where uh, we, okay. Standard check to make sure that you've actually sent some data with the the message. Okay. Sure. Um. Then it, of course, reads out what the first value is. Uh, the first value is going to be like a message. So, so sorry, uh, sorry. This, so this is the the. If you send something, and this is the alternative. If you don't send any data. Yeah. Just have, okay, sure. Yeah. So the if you do send data, it's either from the admin, which is what the first option is, mm -hmm. and uh, it will deregister the name yeah. if if it says kill okay. if you send the message from the admin and it says kill yeah then it will deregister the name that's the first call exactly and then it will uh suicide to the admin yeah so it'll send all the remaining funds right to the administrator and and clean up afterwards okay yeah i always like putting that in because it just cleans up the list and doesn't make a mess <laughs> Yeah, and I guess if you know that there's some kind of bug in there, you can still uh, bail out. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You don't tie up your funds. And, 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 you, remove, and you remove all, all the traces of your scam. So that's a good side effect. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> and also the, the deregistration is an, of the name is, if you have automatic registration, it would be nice to not have a whole bunch of useless contract names out there, right? Okay, and then it also means that you can re-register a new version to the name exactly. rec. Okay, okay. If at least if you don't make a mistake with with this. Yeah. <laughs> yes, which is what happened with uh, Denny's Lotto test. I a bug in 
code accidentally overwrote my admin yeah. address and yeah. Yeah. now I can't can't call the kill. Oh well. So the second option is of uh, um anything else basically. Yeah. Uh it will uh basically So it, sorry, so let me let me ask you why do you um is there a reason that you're not inlining the the date the the call data loads here because you're only using it once? Um, nope. Okay. I could do that. No, just wondering. I mean, of course, it will cause the the line to be a bit longer. Then again, you don't need to remember what this what the difference between this and 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 this was. That is true. Yeah. Um, no, just just wondering about best practices. Not uh, no. Yeah, that's that's just a, a style issue for me. Yeah. I like to, I find it more readable okay. than having really long lines, especially with uh, the Lisp-like language. Makes, makes sense. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's just a thing that I do. I I prefer readability over conciseness. Of course. When it comes to these, so the second option is basically anything that you send. Yep. Yeah. Actually, here's here's the reason why I didn't do it because you actually do need the value if you see the mod. Oh, you re you do reuse it here. Okay, yeah. I see. Yeah. Okay. So I suppose it's probably about the same amount of effort either way. Well, it would only be called once, right? Because if you kill it, I think it would continue execution after doing suicide. Oh yeah, it, it won't it won't be yeah. Uh suicide ends all execution. Um, That's very philosophic. <laughs> That's true. So the second section is basically just buying tickets. Okay. So whatever value you send in the data field, it will take the mod of it by whatever we chose our range of ticket numbers to be, which was stored in OX2. Mm -hmm. So in this case, it's 100. Yeah. And so basically it takes the last two decimal digits, and that's your ticket number. So... That's it's kind of fault tolerant, so that even if you stick in a number like four hundred and ninety-seven, it'll say yeah, ninety-seven. There you go. Exactly, and uh, either f sorry, the, the the integers are unsigned, right? So you won't have any negative values. Yeah, yeah. yeah. negative values loop back around to really large positive numbers. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Okay, and then you increment the the ticket pointer here, pointing to yep. uh, to, and you increment it with two because you need one value for the 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 caller address and one for the ticket number. Okay, and then I add whatever they sent to the jackpot. If you're using the interface, this will be two always, but I can use I I changed it to not be exactly two ether, just whatever you send, mm -hmm. so that if I need to add a little bit to the buffer, I can just manually send a transaction with more than two ETH. Right, so that's where you, uh, yeah, okay, everything goes. Okay. Yeah. And then this section is if nothing is sent. Yeah, because we're checking on the on the length of the, yeah. the data size for the, for the transaction, okay. Yeah, so if no data was sent, then it interprets it as if you're claiming what your balance is. Mm -hmm. So then it just makes a call sending whatever the value is at your storage value yeah and it sends it to you and then it clears out your balance pretty simple and this was oh yeah this was the location in the contact storage okay and yeah i see associated with the user so exactly and i then told you, you the, back to zero yeah yeah i told you the other day that if somebody had a, a really low level account that I it would break some of my contracts. This is why they could accidentally clear out some parts of my Right, because they would be overwriting either yeah. this part or the or the stack of existing lottery existing lottery tickets that you're keeping track of. Yeah. yeah. The the stack of existing lottery tickets would be not as big a deal because it gets wiped out all the time. But overwriting any of these values could be a serious issue. But you can easily get around that just by saying that nobody with a an address less than six can play the lotto. Yeah. And it 
sucks to be them. And it is curious how people can get the address less than six. Yeah, it would it would be extremely lucky. Or or some other book in in the, the Ethereum world. Yeah. Yeah, true. If if somebody can pick an arbitrary address to get, then there is definitely a bug. Yeah. <laughs> a rather serious security yeah. issue. So so just to solve that would be. I guess uh, you just have a little. Says, yeah. Unless caller is greater than six. Yeah. And yeah. then stop. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's simple fix. Um, so yeah, the last section is. Let me see. That's um, the okay. Yeah, sure. Yeah, it's a little bit longer than the first section. This is uh, when a draw happens. So after everything ha everything happens, any transaction that goes to the contract mm -hmm. will actually trigger a check yeah. for a draw. Yeah. So um, what it's what the first when checks for is that it's been at least the set length of a round since the last draw. Okay, so want to, because in location three you are storing the, the start of the round, so the, yep. the, the, the amount of block, the, the block difference, and has that more than the block length, so 10, or you say 16 here, but I guess that will be... It used to be 16. Okay, sure. Yep. Haven't changed the comment because now it's, it started out as hard coded and then I changed it to... Right, you, you didn't refactor your comments to go along with it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so let's see. F okay, first thing that I do, I set the the start of the next round to one one block after this block. Exactly. Uh, and then I guess these next three lines are four lines, are sort of the most interesting part of the entire contract. So, okay, this is this is the like deterministic random number. Because pretty much everything in Ethereum is deterministic. There yep. is no random number because a random number would just be uh, the miner choosing what to do. Right? I, I Yeah, sure. Because the miner would have to supply the random number. Yeah, and, so and no could... matter who executes it or if you execute again, it should have the same results. So that's, uh, yeah. well, of course, that's the definition of being deterministic. Yeah. So the the way around it, there's... There's been quite a conversation about random numbers in the forums. And uh, biggest consensus was hash the timestamp. And uh, I, don't, I don't like that f approach just by itself. Mm -hmm. Because um, the timestamp is also manipulatable by the miner, right? Of course, yeah. They basically choose what time they say they release the block. So... They could manipulate it and try a bunch of different possible timestamps to see which one will make them win. And, and the, di the timestamp, I think, at least in Ethereum, it's uh, it's per second, right? I, yeah, I believe so. It's so it's also a quite a limited, quite a limited range. I mean, giving a one-minute block, uh, it's you can just predict all the possible timestamps for the for the next yeah. block, and yeah, it's it's sure. So, uh, to get around that, the first thing I did was previous hash. Mm -hmm. I store that value. So that's the hash uh, of the, the previous block. Yes. Okay. And the reason I did that is it sort of works like a salt. Yeah. Uh, so you you would basically have to try every possible value. Like you'd have to restart your, your search. Yeah. If you're a malicious miner, every single block. Exactly. So you can't produce a, a rainbow table saying, okay, at this time I can definitely win the lottery. Yeah. Um, and then the second one is the Coinbase, and I cho choice choice. The Coinbase is still related to the miner, so it's. So the Coinbase is actually the address where the miner for the block gets the payout or the, the payout rewards for mining the block and execution of all the of all the contracts. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So I chose the Coinbase because even though it's still manipulatable by the the miner, it's. I figure it's got to be harder to maintain a list of however many addresses in order to search through them all, mm -hmm. right? So uh, in this case, it's only a number between 1 and 100. So you'd expect that within 100 tries of different addresses, you'd, you'd find one that did what you wanted it to. But if you make it like 
a lottery worth between one and ten million, yep. suddenly you have to maintain a list of ten million Coinbase addresses. Try them all yep. every single minute. Yep. So it it makes it a little bit harder, in my opinion. Though I'd be happy to know if somebody has any reason that this is a bad approach to this. And then the next line just takes the the hash of it. So actually, it takes the hash of these two values. I'm I'm just uh, is it concatenating both or what is the? Um... Uh, from my understanding, I've read through the the Etherpad many times. What this is doing is it starts at the memory address. Um, oh OX sure, of 20, course, of course. And then it does. Uh, yeah, yeah, and then the length. Bytes. Okay, so it just uses both as a, and then it hashes that. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Yeah. And then of course it mods it by whatever you chose your draw to be between. Yeah. And, um, oh, that's a bug. Nice. We have found many bugs during these <laughs> walkthroughs. It's always yeah. great. <laughs> yeah, that should say, oh, at OX60. OX60. Oh, right. here instead of 80. No, 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 that's parts right. It should mod at OX60 by at at. Oh, OX2. So what is it doing now? Uh, right now it is doing something very bad. <laughs> I don't even know what's stored at OX3. I don't think anything is. Okay, so this is a way, one way to cheat. Yeah, that's a bug. I'll fix that. Don't worry. Yeah, okay. <laughs> next, next, just, just let's just continue. <laughs> I'm just writing down that I need to fix that. Yeah. Um, so uh, then I have two memory addresses. One is to count how many winners there were, how oh. many jackpot winners. Yeah. And one's to uh, that's uh, a storage location for um, copying where the the winners go to because. Currently, we have a long list of tickets with a, like a, an owner and then a ticket number, Yeah. right? Pairs. Yeah. I want to go through and search. That's what this big for loop is. I go through and I search, see if the ticket matches, and then copy the uh, owner into a special segment of memory. And this storage location is in memory, or is it in the context storage? I believe that's in memory. It's a... Oh yeah, it's one. It's one. Uh, yeah. At, yeah. 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 Okay. Hmm. I I should I should say memory location. Honestly, I've I've wrote most of this at like f between the hours of two and five a.m. So <laughs> not not always at my peak during those hours. Actually, it's five a.m. right now. <laughs> and this um, is what is. And this value is incremented as well. This is again, this is some kind of um, yeah, it's a buffer. pointer. Pointer, okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, <laughs> pointers just, are just fun because you get those nice lines of at at space at. Right, all kind nice, all kind of nice references. Sure. Yeah. So uh, this is a big loop. It basically goes through all the tickets. Let's see if I can keep these ones as a as a reference sake. Okay, sure. Yeah. So do you ref? Okay, looping it while. What's this? It, this this is going through the ticket locations. So it's it's a pointer to the ticket locations. If you'll remember, tickets start at OX8. Yes. In in storage. Yeah. And then it goes. Oh, and that part. In, okay, and you're storing that in IEC. Oh, you that's your yeah. that's your iterator. Okay. Yeah. And then I'll I'll jump to if you look at the last part of that statement. Yeah. So I yep. skip over. Yeah. To. And this is while you are, what is an OX1? Uh, the, oh, that stores how many tickets there are. Sure, okay. Yep. Or technically it stores where the, it's a pointer to where the next ticket would go. Exactly, so you're just uh, going to the buffer until you're at the top of the stack. Yep. Um, so then I, I basically create a, a special pointer it's a little bit unnecessary. And don't you have off by one error here? Or this is pointing to the next free next free. position, I see. Next, I yeah. see. Because when you're storing it, you're incrementing 
OX1. Yes, you're incrementing afterwards. Okay. Yeah, yeah sure. Um, I did have an off by one error. Here, <laughs> I'm sure you did. But, <laughs> but I, I did go back and fix it at some point. Mm -hmm. Actually, technically, I didn't have the error. Ethereum had the error, but Gavin fixed it for me. Excellent, excellent. Very nice of him. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, I just create a pointer, the second slot, so yep. where the, the ticket's located. Yep. Then I do a check if the the ticket matches the draw, which, if you remember, was at OX80. Yes. W what is the add at notation? Add at is uh, storage, like S store, uh, S load. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. S load. So it's S load of M load of OX100, which. OX oh, so this is just expanding to uh, to S load. Basically, yeah. and then using this as a look. Okay, I see. Yeah, so that's that's basically dereferencing the pointer. Yeah. Um. So if the ticket matches, then I copy over the winner address, I increment the memory locator, mm -hmm. and then I increment the counter of how many winners there have been. Yep. And then the next little segment is the second way to win. That if you match on the last digit, so mod 10. Oh, I didn't even know this was possible. Okay. Yeah. If you ma match on the last digit, then you win five ether. Uh, okay, so this is to win the jackpot, and the other one is just to uh, the, the participation award. Yeah. it's uh, There's a one in 10 chance of winning, and... Sh you only it's it's a terrible payout <laughs> but you you it looks like it's a good payout because you more than double your money hmm. yeah 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 sure uh, so you i mean 10 10 times 2 20 and you're paying out 5 so it's 25% reward right yeah okay it's it's absolutely terrible it's <laughs> statistically it's horrible to play this well, you I think make that's it. i think that's the same <laughs> with a lot of lotteries uh, to be honest yeah. but um you you could make it so that it's more fair, but I wanted it to be a scam. No, 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 no just make it obvious. That's okay. Yeah. So uh, the an important line is that I actually subtract the five ether from the jackpot beforehand. Of course, right? Yes. Yeah. It, yeah. The, so the money needs to come from somewhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and then I just clear the tickets out. That's what the uh, two lines at the bottom of this for loop are so just it, clearing out tickets but in this case somebody could have got the web the jackpot mm -hmm. and then afterwards oh no oh. you just okay you're just noting where what the the, the, the winners are mm -hmm. uh, but you're not doing the payout yet and here you're doing it basically immediately immediately i see the reason is that I need to know how many people won the jackpot and so I can divide it. Of course, of course. And you need to know what is remaining after compensating for these uh, secondary yeah. wins. Okay, sure. Um, that was basically just to throw in a little bit of extra fun. No, no, but it's a good, uh, good alternative, <laughs> sure. Uh, and then at, at the... So after the clearing the storage and after the for loop, I reset the ticket pointer back mm -hmm. to OX8. Yep. And then... Oh, uh, sorry. Yep. Yep. At this point... Sorry, let me scroll we, a little bit more. There we yeah. go. Yeah. Yeah, we're almost there. At this point, we have how many winners we have. So this last segment is simply to uh, divide the jackpot among the winners and pay them out. And... Uh, and, of course, have the, the cuts. Yes. The admin's the, cut. Yeah, so I, I steal a little bit based on the configurable value at the top, mm -hmm. and then I subtract what I'm stealing from the jackpot, and then I divide it among the winners. And then I just loop through the list of winners and give them all their, their winnings. That's what that last bit is. And since you can you cannot you cannot do fractions, but then again, you're, you're working with ethers, so 10 to the power of 18, so probably... The little rounding errors is not, uh, not an issue. Oh yeah, it's it's way below your uh, <laughs> it's way below an ether. Okay. It's since it's on like the the order of ways. Exactly. Exactly. Nobody's going to notice. Yeah. Um. 
Okay, so you're adding the winnings to the account. And then this, then I just set the. I could have stolen the the part that I I took out, but I just funnel it back into the jackpot to seed the next round. And this was. Yeah, OX six is the 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 jackpot value, so I store what. Ah, uh, of course, of course. Yeah. Into the jackpot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And then a lot of brackets to uh, to close it down. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. So I, I was wondering about the randomization. I think I mean it could still, of course, be influenced oh, yes. because you you can still participate to the rounds that you are doing the drawing for. Mm -hmm. Isn't that the case? Yes. I mean, that is what happens the first time that I bought a ticket. Well, it was more than 10 rounds before the previous one. So, yeah. And because I know the state and I could, if I'm the only miner, if I'm only one of the rare miners, I could actually influence it or, or try uh, all the possible values. Uh, yeah. And especially if you control a bigger set of the, of the, of the, of the mining of all the miners, you can yeah, that's reasonably predict this. So so what would be a way to I think there's a way to solve that where you would pre commit and you would exactly do the payout um, like one round later. Yeah, there's there's many interesting ways to to do it. Um I'm not sure like the miner can still manipulate it if you do it like this. Mm -hmm. So one way to get sort of deterministically random values from multiple participants is to have them all like choose a number yeah submit a hash of the number to the contract which stores them yeah so now uh they now you have basically proof of what they did choose without knowing what they chose right they're locking in their their, their yeah. pick yeah and then uh then they have to submit the actual values and the actual values get hashed yes so n none of the parties can know beforehand what it's going to be, except for the last person to submit their true value. Yep. And this is this is the major problem with it. The last person to submit their true value will know whether or not they're going to win. And basically they can decide whether or not to submit their value based on if they're going to lose. Yeah. So that's an issue. Another option is to just have a, a trusted source of randomness, like a data feed. So if you had a, a contract out there that you basically could request random numbers from that were being generated by an external source, not in Ethereum. Then sure, that but, would but you would, you would. I mean, the, 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 I think the main problem is here that you can still buy a ticket for the same at the same time as you're doing the the payout or when you're doing the draw. Uh, because then you know the entire state of the network, including the state of this data feed. Well, that's not as much of an issue because even if you bought the ticket before the end of the round and then you you were the one who mined it, mm -hmm. you could still manipulate the, the mining in order to make your previous choice win. So, like, you, you could already say, oh, well, I picked Lotto Ticket 72. Yeah, yeah, sure. So I, I mean, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, eventually, once uh, the the alarm gets implemented what i would do is i'd have this contract call itself every 10 blocks yeah so that the round was exactly 10 blocks and not however many like whenever somebody decided to send a, a a transaction to it right 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 because you cannot go more than one previous hash back so you cannot use that hash state yeah yeah, yeah i see hmm okay but yeah I think it, maybe there's another way to do it where you first you have another round where you basically lock in the previous hash and then the next let me see so you lock in the previous hash and the next one the next round afterwards you will actually be I don't know maybe use two previous hashes it's you hmm. still know those values though. Of course, of course, yeah. So, yeah. Hmm. like I, I could make it completely deterministic, in which case I just take the previous hash, right? Of course. But then, and then, um, but then what people would do is they'd wait until a round where the previous hash makes them win. 
Okay. Now, once the alarm gets implemented, that would be less of an issue because people won't know beforehand what the previous hash is until exactly. round Exactly. You 10. can really you can really lock in that. Yeah. Yeah, and people so cannot what, see it anymore. So exactly, sort of similar to what you were saying, or maybe exactly what you're saying, but I didn't understand it. If you did lock in the previous, previous hash, yeah. and then you waited around to actually do the draw. Yes, exactly. Then uh, like you, you basically shut everybody out of buying tickets one round early, yeah. and then you have alarm call the yeah. it in the next round to yeah. actually perform the draw. That would work. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it would be both deterministic and yeah. not manipulatable. Yeah, but make it a bit more complex. Well, yeah. not not with alarm so much, but uh, if you want to do that now without alarm, it will be more more complex. You need to do the, the yeah. pulling of the contract, something like that. Hopefully, okay. alarm comes soon. I'm I'm really looking forward to that feature. Yeah, that will be uh, that will be useful, etc. Et um, so, what is uh, what is next in uh, in uh, Danny's lottery? What is the future? What can we uh, what can we expect? Uh, <laughs> Um, well, I did think about, um, making like a fully blown casino <laughs> <laughs> at some point. Seriously? <laughs> like you could, it, it's not, once you get one game down, the rest of them are pretty simple, right? Anything that's pure chance is basically the lottery with fancy coverings. And then there's an interesting problem with like hidden information games like, uh, poker. Yeah. Because the problem with poker is if you were to do it naively, someone could just read the contract and figure out who has what cards and know exactly when they should fold and who's bluffing, right? Mm -hmm. Because they, they can just read the values. So you need a trusted source of randomness of some kind. And... Uh, yeah, or, or and and or have the what you, what you were saying just before, where the the participants provide a hash of their random value, or they pre-commit to a certain part of the yeah the random value. That's that's also possible. Of course, you run into the, like the problem with that is that it's a two-stage process. So first, you have to submit the hash, yep. then you have to wait until the appropriate time to submit the true value. Yep. Otherwise, the system breaks down. So it's a lot of coordination. I, honestly, I think that just a data, data feed that you trust as being random would probably be the, the easier way to go with that. Yeah, yeah. well, we have to we have to see how that is. Uh, um, I think that's a sensitive topic because uh, it's, it's hard to prove that it is really random. True. Yeah. But, like, something, there's, there are websites out there that are considered, like, trustable sources of randomness random.org i believe is one exactly Be before i forget actually le let's take a brief look at uh, at uh, html i mean uh, it's, oh, it's right, already yeah. pretty late for you but i just wanna don't want to miss this opportunity just run by this on a, on a high level yeah it's been forever since i programmed in html it was my first uh programming language i guess it's not yeah, yeah. really a programming language but it's okay, let's 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 keep the 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 the, the style sheet border plate stuff. So here is, I guess, the yeah, the script's the interesting part. Okay, so that's twenty five to uh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. sure. Ah, it's here's the hard coded address of the of the contract. Yep. Yeah. Okay, you got the buy ticket function, lookup ticket function, mm -hmm. claim function, check function. Basically, that is. Every button. Every button has a function. And lookup jackpot. Yeah. Lookup tickets, lookup jackpot. So lookup jackpot, the first button. Yeah. You're it's accessing. basically just looking for an, a value at six, because if you remember, OX6 contains the jackpot. And these are hexadecimal? Oh, no, uh, of course, six doesn't matter, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Silly. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's actually converting it to a U256 value. Yeah. Yeah. Which is fun because some of these don't work some of these conversions don't work and string compares do not work <laughs> there's a whole bunch of things that that's, don't work that's, that's what you said about avoiding certain functions yeah and then of course i just divide it so that it's actually in ether and not in anything else sure like, yeah 
And then you uh, display it in, uh, in with the two decimal points yeah. in the layout. So, so that's an easy way to access the storage. Yeah, sure. Yeah, super simple. Um, I guess the only other one that's kind of interesting would be like check just oh, sorry. does the same thing. It looks at looks at the, the values. And I told you that I set it up so it'll check all your addresses. That's mm -hmm. where it's like the var my addresses is eth.keys. That's all your keys. And then it loops through them and checks what the balance in each, is in each of them. Okay, is that actually the case? So if I do check, it says five. And if I reorder my addresses, it should also say five. Exactly, yep. okay. But that, but that doesn't work for the for the tick. Yeah, that's for check. Okay. Yeah. Um. Uh. So I guess buy tickets the only other one that's kind of interesting. The yeah, because you're just... sending a transaction. Yeah. So where's buy ticket? Yeah. Yeah. So ticket number just gets whatever you stuck in the field, turns it into a number, performs a basic check whether or not. Uh, You've entered it in the right range. Mm -hmm. Gives you some alerts, um, and then if if the uh, ticket number is not empty, then it's this ETH dot transact yep. that actually performs a transaction. So the first segment is going to be the secret part of your key for signing. Second part is the value attached to, to it. To ether, exactly. Yep. You pay the lottery parts. address, and then let yep. me scroll a little bit. I see. Okay. Yep. Uh, that sends the actual value of the like the the ticket in the data field. Okay. Yeah. Then uh, that's the uh, the gas to give it, and then it uses the standard gas price. Right. And, and this is just, I guess, just arbitrary high number to to make it run. Yeah, ten thousand always works. I haven't figured out what the lower level is, but I figure most people have a hundred finny. I think ten thousand is the max as well, currently for a block, isn't it? Uh, I thought it was like a million ether. Oh, okay. Oh, that's that's a difference. <laughs> Just the order of a couple orders of magnitude, exactly right. <laughs> So, yeah, so, no, so, no so here thing. you're actually using a byte. It's a, okay. So you're sending a byte array, but in this case you have only one value. Yeah, because you always now. The recent change is that uh, the data is a byte array and the memory is a byte array. Mm -hmm. So I have to convert a, a value into a byte array before I can send it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so the guess price, I guess that just that's just the default guess price. Yeah. Okay, sure. And that's just provided by uh, the the clients. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Actually, I, I actually I wonder. That might actually, you know how you have that field that allows you to choose what your gas price is. I wonder if that pulls it from there. Oh, yeah. So if you're actually sending a transaction, oh, that could be yeah. interesting. There's your gas, and then right next to it is your gas price, right? Yeah. Because you currently have it set to 10 Zabo. Zabo, yes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So could you see that in the blocks, what the gas price was, or is that not... <sighs> Oh my! Uh, we could try sending, try buying another oh, ticket. Here, here was it. Yeah, well, ah. let's let's first see if what is exposed as part. Oh, so it says guest price. Yep. Ten thousand gig away. Okay. Oh, hang on. So I'm going back to transact. Well, you have to you have changed the guest price. No, uh, no, we need to change it. So we just change yeah. it to nine. No, we just do to eleven. I buy another ticket. I need to move my ether contract on top. Oh, here it is already. Uh, where was it? Transact contract blockchain. Oh, I cannot inspect. I need a way to it is mined. So now it is mined. Yeah. I go to the inspect. Mm, mm, no. No. Just no. standard. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. It might be at some point that he implements that. Like I said, the JavaScript bindings are super early. Sure. No, but it's I mean it's already so powerful just to see what's possible here, and, and it's so much better oh, yeah. than having to hard code these uh, these data fields. Yeah, I was I was really excited when I 
found out about this. In fact, I think that's the reason I went out and installed Linux, which took me a day to do to clean out my windows and then dual boot. Well, I hope it was uh, was worth it. I mean, oh, uh, yes. now, I, now, I now you're the, now you're the proud owner of uh, of the of the first completely decentralized gambling uh, Ethereum. So, uh, oh yes, I am. I'm a real like cartel head now. <laughs> okay, I'm uh, going to be running everything soon. Uh, excellent, Danny. I'm uh, I'm very curious uh, what you'll be uh, coming up with uh, with next. Keep 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 us informed. Sure. <laughs> Thank mm-hmm. you.